MH370 disappeared, which marked the start of one of the biggest aviation mysteries of all time. For years, the aviation community has been haunted by the enigmatic disappearance of Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. Despite persistent search endeavors, the whereabouts of this flight have stubbornly resisted discovery. But hold on to your seats because a groundbreaking discovery by researchers promises to reveal the elusive location of MH370. Is the mystery of Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 finally unraveling? Are we on the brink of uncovering the truth behind one of aviation's greatest mysteries? Join us in this video as we delve into scientists' terrifying new discovery of Malaysian Flight 370 that changes everything. Recent scientific revelations and theories about the MH370 incident have been shocking. These findings promise to revolutionize our understanding of the disaster offering profound insights into the events that unfolded on that tragic day. The ill-fated flight, MH370, was a carefully planned international passenger journey by Malaysian Airlines. Its intended destination was the vibrant city of Beijing, the capital of China. On board were over 200 passengers, ready to reunite with their familiar homeland or embark on the thrilling exploration of a foreign land. The diverse group comprised 227 passengers from 14 countries and 12 Malaysian crew members, symbolizing a mosaic of individuals traversing vast oceans and lands. MH370 initiated its flight from Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia's bustling capital at midnight on March 8, 2014. Envisaged as a routine flight spanning approximately 5,570 kilometers over about 5 hours and 34 minutes to Beijing, it unexpectedly seized the world's attention. Piloted by Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah and First Officer Farik Abdul Hamid, the advanced Boeing 777-200 ER aircraft was a preferred choice for many airlines on long-haul routes. The aircraft was renowned for its safety and cutting-edge technology. As MH370 ascended into the night sky with passengers settling in, it mysteriously vanished from radar screens, leaving an enigmatic puzzle inside the cockpit. Captain Zahari and First Officer Farik, seasoned professionals entrusted with passenger safety, found themselves at the center of a baffling mystery. Around 1.01 a.m. Malaysian Standard Time, at an altitude of 35,000 feet, the aircraft transmitted its routine half-hourly data report through the aircraft communications addressing and reporting system, ACARS. The report was unremarkable, with no indications of trouble on board. At approximately 1.07 a.m., the final ACARS message signifying normal system operations was sent. The anticipated update at 1.37 a.m. has yet to materialize. The most haunting moment occurred around 1.19 a.m. as the aircraft approached Vietnamese airspace. The cockpit communicated with the air traffic controller in Kuala Lumpur, uttering the routine phrase, Good night, Malaysia 370. This signaled the handover from one control center to another, but the anticipated communication from the new center never happened. This marked the final communication from MH370 to anyone on the ground. Shortly after the last message, around 1.21 a.m., the aircraft's transponder responsible for communicating with ground-based radar either was deliberately turned off or experienced a failure. This action rendered civilian radar unable to track the aircraft's movements. Nevertheless, military radar continued to monitor MH370 as it deviated from its intended route. Instead of heading north to Beijing, the aircraft abruptly turned westward over the Malay Peninsula. Despite the inactive transponder, MH370's satellite communication system persisted in sending hourly pings to a satellite owned by Inmarsat, a satellite company. Although these pings did not provide specific location data, 
they signaled that the plane remained powered and airborne. The final complete handshake occurred at 8.11 a.m., indicating that the aircraft had been in flight for nearly seven hours after losing contact with air traffic control. The disappearance of MH370 triggered one of the most extensive search and rescue operations in history. A timeline of the initial efforts unfolded as follows. On March 8, 2014, MH370 was declared missing when it failed to arrive in Beijing. The initial search concentrated on the South China Sea, where the last civilian radar signal was detected. Between March 9th and 11, 2014, the search area expanded to the Strait of Malacca based on military radar data suggesting a possible turnback of the plane. The search scope widened further, reaching the Andaman Sea between March 12th and 14, 2014. Numerous countries, including China, the US, and India, joined the collaborative search effort, deploying ships, aircraft, and satellite imagery. On March 15, 2014, Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak disclosed that the plane's communication systems had been intentionally disabled. Based on the satellite pings, he suggested that the aircraft might have continued flying for up to seven hours after losing contact. Two potential corridors were identified, a northern corridor extending from northern Thailand to Kazakhstan and a southern corridor from Indonesia to the southern Indian Ocean. Following further satellite data analysis from March 16th to 24, 2014, the focus shifted to the Southern Corridor. Several countries, including Australia, initiated search efforts in the Southern Indian Ocean. Satellite images from Australia, China, and France revealed potential debris, but none could be confirmed as originating from MEH-370. On March 24th, 2014, Prime Minister Razak announced, based on new satellite analysis, that MEH-370's last known position was in the middle of the Indian Ocean west of Perth, Australia. With deep regret, he disclosed that the flight had concluded in the southern Indian Ocean. From March 25th to April 2014, the search persisted in the southern Indian Ocean, involving ships and aircraft from multiple countries scouring the area. Although several acoustic signals, potentially from the plane's black boxes, were detected, they did not lead to significant discoveries. Despite intensified efforts throughout April and subsequent months, including deploying underwater drones and specialized equipment to scan the ocean floor, MH370 remained missing. The disappearance of MH370 stands as a heart-wrenching incident that has plunged families and loved ones into deep sorrow and left the aviation community in a state of disbelief. The widespread search and rescue missions, global collaboration, and the application of cutting-edge technology highlight the world's collective dedication to unraveling this enigma. Nonetheless, despite these laborious efforts, the final location of MH370 and the factors behind its disappearance persist as unresolved mysteries. One of the most contentious and captivating theories regarding the destiny of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 suggests the possibility of it being a case of pilot suicide. According to this theory, Captain Zaharia Ahmad Shah intentionally diverted the flight, leading to its landing in the southern Indian Ocean, resulting in the loss of his own life along with those of all 238 passengers and crew on board. The initial evidence lies in the flight path of MEH-370, departing Kuala Lumpur at 041 local time on March 8, 2014. The intended route was toward Beijing, following a northeastern trajectory over the South China Sea. However, at 119, the aircraft made its final verbal contact with air traffic control, bidding Goodnight Malaysian 370. Shortly after, the transponder and aircraft communications addressing and reporting system, ACARS, were intentionally deactivated or disabled. This maneuver rendered the aircraft undetectable to civilian radar. Following this, the plane executed a pronounced left turn, retracing its course over the Malay Peninsula and entering the Strait of Malacca. It veered right, proceeding south over the Indian Ocean for approximately six hours 
until it exhausted its fuel and crashed. The next piece of evidence revolves around the background and conduct of the pilot. A 53-year-old experienced pilot with more than 18,000 hours of flying experience, Zahari was married with three children and had no documented history of mental illness or criminal activity. Despite this, certain investigators and experts have entertained speculations about conceivable personal or professional challenges that might have compelled him towards suicidal actions. Reports suggested marital problems, an alleged affair, political activism against the Malaysian government, depression, loneliness, or an obsession with aviation and a desire to conclude his career dramatically. The third piece of evidence involves the pilot's home flight simulator. After the disappearance of MH370, investigators searched Zahari's residence, seizing his computer and flight simulator. They discovered that he had used the simulator to practice flight paths resembling the one taken by MH370, including routes over the Indian Ocean and landings on remote islands. Additionally, they found that he had deleted some data from his simulator a few weeks before the flight, which some analysts interpreted as a possible indication of planning a hijacking, flying to an undisclosed destination, or crashing into the ocean. The fourth piece of evidence revolves around the plane's absence of communication or distress signals. According to this theory, Zahari intentionally avoided contact with air traffic control or other parties after turning off the communication systems. He further thwarted attempts from anyone on board to send messages or alerts by securing the cockpit door, deactivating the emergency transponder, or depressurizing the cabin to hinder or harm the passengers and crew. Subsequently, he piloted the plane along a predetermined course until its eventual crash. An alternative theory suggests that the flight was hijacked, proposing that the aircraft was intentionally diverted from its course by an individual or group for political, personal, or financial reasons. The aircraft's erratic flight path supports this hijacking theory after its last communication with air traffic control. H-370 executed unforeseen maneuvers, significantly diverging from its intended path to Beijing implying that someone with a thorough understanding of the aircraft's systems was at the helm. Moreover, both primary communication systems of the aircraft, namely the aircraft communications addressing and reporting system and the transponder, were deliberately deactivated within a short time frame. This deliberate action aimed to render the plane undetectable to civilian radar and ground-based communication systems. Data from satellites suggests that MH370 remained airborne for several hours after losing contact with air traffic control. The prolonged flight duration and intentional alterations to its course point to controlled flight rather than an uncontrolled descent, resulting from a technical malfunction. The lack of distress calls despite unexpected course changes and disabled communication systems suggest that the pilots may have been hindered or prevented from sending a distress signal, aligning with the hijacking scenario. But to substantiate the hijacking theory, there must be a discernible motive behind the act. Some have postulated that the hijacking could have been politically motivated, with the plane's disappearance intended as a statement against the Malaysian government or another political entity. However, no group has stepped forward to claim responsibility, an uncommon occurrence for politically motivated hijackings. Another conceivable motive is the intention to ransom either the passengers or the aircraft, but no ransom demands have been publicly disclosed. Additionally, there have been some discussions about hijacking for the potential scrap value of the plane. However, the logistical challenges of clandestinely landing and dismantling such a large aircraft make this scenario less plausible. Alternatively, it is conceivable that an individual harboring a personal grievance or agenda orchestrated the hijacking, from a disgruntled employee seeking revenge to someone with a vendetta against a passenger or the airline. Despite these possibilities, some experts draw parallels with the 9-11's attacks, leading them to infer that MH370 was hijacked with the intent of deploying it in a subsequent terror attack. 
Although the loaded plane could have been weaponized, no such attack has occurred and no group has claimed responsibility. A more startling theory posits that MH370 was accidentally shot down. This notion suggests that, at the time of MH370's disappearance, multiple countries were engaged in military exercises in the South China Sea and the Indian Ocean. The aircraft could have been misidentified as a potential threat since military exercises frequently involve live fire drills. Past incidents have shown that civilian aircraft were mistakenly targeted during such operations. For example, in 1988, the U.S. Navy accidentally shot down Iran Air Flight 655, mistakenly identifying it as a hostile jet. MH370 could have become a target if it had inadvertently entered a live fire exercise. Based on available data, the reconstructed erratic flight path of MH370 implies that the plane might have been attempting to evade something or was under external control. After its last communication with air traffic control, the aircraft changed directions and flew back across the Malay Peninsula. This change in direction could be interpreted as an evasive maneuver. Furthermore, the fact that the plane's transponder was turned off as it entered Vietnamese airspace could suggest an attempt to go dark and avoid detection, possibly after becoming aware of or perceiving a threat. Military radar systems extensively monitor the regions traversed by MH370. If the plane had been shot down, it's likely that one or more governments detected the event but chose not to disclose it, either to prevent diplomatic incidents or to conceal a tragic mistake. The initial reluctance of certain nations to share radar data immediately after the disappearance could be seen as an effort to conceal evidence. One of the most puzzling elements of the MH370 Enigma is the scant wreckage recovered. Although certain debris verified to be from the plane has been discovered on islands in the Indian Ocean, the primary wreckage site remains elusive. If the plane were downed, particularly by a missile engineered for aircraft destruction, it would have disintegrated into myriad pieces, dispersing debris across a broad expanse. This dispersion could significantly complicate identifying the main crash site, particularly if it lies underwater. Over the years, various individuals have claimed to possess inside information or evidence supporting the shoot-down theory. While many of these claims lack verifiable proof and should be approached with skepticism, they contribute to the narrative that the plane's disappearance was not a result of a simple accident or pilot action. Additionally, one can consider the Southern Arc theory based on satellite handshakes with the plane, suggesting that MH370 concluded its flight in the Southern Indian Ocean. Advocates of the shoot-down theory contend that this data might have been misconstrued or manipulated to redirect focus away from the genuine crash site. Another more pragmatic theory suggests that the cargo, specifically hazardous materials within the aircraft's hold, sealed its fate. This cargo included lithium-ion batteries, whose explosion may have triggered a mechanical issue. Several compelling arguments support this theory. Lithium-ion batteries, commonly employed in electronic devices like smartphones, laptops, and cameras, are known for their volatility under specific conditions. If these batteries are damaged, subjected to a short circuit, overcharged or exposed to high temperatures, they can catch fire or explode. The Federal Aviation Administration FAA, has documented numerous cases where lithium-ion batteries caused plane fires. Considering MH370 was transporting a substantial shipment of these batteries, it is plausible that a malfunction or damage to one or more of these batteries could have initiated a fire. The theory gains further credibility when you consider the sudden and unexplained change in course. Some proponents of the lithium-ion battery theory propose that a fire in the cargo hold might have led to rapid decompression or other critical system failures. In response, the pilots may have altered the course to make an emergency landing at the nearest suitable airport. If the fire subsequently incapacitated the crew or further compromised the aircraft's systems, 
It could explain why the plane continued flying off course until it eventually depleted its fuel and crashed. Another potential factor could be a communication breakdown. If a fire erupted on board, it could swiftly damage the aircraft's communication systems, providing a rationale for the absence of a distress call from the pilots. The swift progression of a fire, especially one fueled by lithium-ion batteries, might have overwhelmed the crew before they could relay the emergency to air traffic control. There are documented instances where lithium-ion batteries caused or were suspected of causing fires on aircraft, such as in 2010. A UPS cargo plane in Dubai experienced a crash following an onboard fire. The investigation indicated that the aircraft was carrying a substantial shipment of lithium-ion batteries, believed to have contributed to the fire. Similarly, in 2013, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner faced grounding orders due to concerns about its lithium-ion battery system after multiple fire incidents. These incidents underscore the potential risks of transporting significant quantities of lithium-ion batteries by air. The Malaysian government acknowledged the presence of lithium-ion batteries in the plane's cargo. While the report did not definitively attribute the batteries to causing a fire, it did not rule out the possibility. Acknowledging the batteries' presence and recognized risks provides some credence to this theory. However, there were initial contradictions regarding the shipment of lithium-ion batteries on MH370. Malaysia Airlines initially stated that the batteries were not on the cargo manifest, but subsequent investigations revealed that over 200 kilograms of batteries were indeed on board. This inconsistency has led some to speculate that the potential hazards of the battery shipment might have been downplayed or overlooked. One argument against alternative theories, such as a mid-air explosion, is the limited widespread debris. A fire initiated by lithium-ion batteries could have hindered the plane's systems and crew, leading the aircraft to fly on autopilot until it exhausted its fuel and made a relatively intact water landing. This could explain the scarcity of debris found in the initial days after the plane's disappearance. However, a recent report on the research conducted by Richard Jeffrey offers better clarity on the aircraft's whereabouts. Richard Jeffrey is a British aeronautical engineer dedicated to unraveling the mystery of MEH-370, and he employed an innovative method to track the aircraft's flight path and impact location. His approach integrates satellite radar, oceanographic, and radio data. Jeffrey's research, which involves collaboration with academics Hannes Kutzi and Professor Simon Maskell, is detailed in a 232-page report. Jeffrey's method relies on WSPRNet, Weak Signal Propagation Reporter Network, a global network of amateur radio operators transmitting and receiving low-power signals with long-distance coverage. These signals are influenced by aircraft, altering their strength and direction. By analyzing these changes, Jeffrey successfully detected and tracked MH370 over the Indian Ocean. In addition to WWSPARNET data, Jeffrey utilized information from Inmarsat, the satellite company receiving hourly pings from MH370's satellite communication system. Although these pings did not provide exact location data, they indicated the distance and angle between the plane and the satellite. Jeffrey narrowed down potential flight paths and impact locations by integrating Boeing's performance data and oceanographic drift data. Jeffrey's examination uncovered that MH370 continued its flight for nearly seven hours after losing contact with air traffic control, traversing approximately 5,000 kilometers. The plane initially followed a westward trajectory over the Malay Peninsula before veering southward over the Indian Ocean, guided by the influence of wind and Earth's rotation. Its final descent into the ocean occurred at 1026 on March 8th, 2014 at coordinates 30.57 degrees south and 98.75 degrees east. This location is roughly 2,000 kilometers west of Perth, Australia, and approximately 1,000 kilometers north of the previous search area. Experts, including Professor Teresa Pataliacci 
the head of oceanography at the University of Western Australia, commended Jeffrey's research, highlighting its concordance with their analyses of floating debris drift. Families of MH370 victims, in search of closure for over seven years, have embraced Jeffrey's discoveries. He envisions his research instigating a renewed search for MH370, utilizing underwater drones and specialized equipment for ocean floor scanning. Jeffrey underscores the significance of unraveling the truth behind MEH 370 for the affected families, the aviation industry, and the broader public. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.